Welcome back to another episode of Psych Cosmos. Today we got a great podcast with Andrew. He's another, uh, this is this is our second podcast with him and he knows a ton about legal related things, so stay tuned for more of that. Andrew, thanks again for joining. I know that we already did our first podcast, uh, which hasn't even released yet, but I know people are going to be really excited for that. That one should be coming out in about a week or so, and then we're going to have this one coming out shortly after that. But basically, in the last podcast, if you didn't watch it, Andrew and I talked a lot about uh, the legalities. What, what does it really mean to be a human individual in the eyes of the law, uh, at least the Western law, right? And then um, and, and then just a lot of details kind of surrounding that. Today, Andrew had uh, a couple things he wanted to share. Um, I think specifically we were going to first start us off uh, on birth certificates and just some more information on that. So, uh, Andrew, I'll pass it back to you. Awesome. Yeah, and, and thanks for having me again. I really appreciate this. I think it's important that we uh, expose this as far and wide as we can um, in, in a in short amount of time because nobody has the time to read everything necessary to uh, get themselves situated and so what we're going to have to do is come together and share knowledge because someone has the full puzzle but they don't want us to have it or to see it or how to put it together that's right, right? that's and right so that's right we all are going to have to bring our own pieces to this puzzle and then there's even some people in here who are paid to pretend like they have a piece of the puzzle that's right and they make it this glowing shining thing and then unfortunately uh, mislead people and uh, discourage people from ever actually completing the puzzle for themselves that's right and tons of those people so yep gatekeepers it, it, it makes me yes mm -hmm. and, uh, and just downright misleading for the material gain of federal reserve notes of all things of course uh, yeah, yeah fake paper money i know <laughs> yeah this yes. ridiculous yeah yeah um so I guess, yeah, I will touch on, we, we talked about the birth certificate last, uh, last time, pretty much the idea there being if we can distinguish ourselves from the entity on the birth certificate, we really are doing ourselves a huge favor, and even more so, we can directly address the problem of human trafficking therein, because our, they're wanting us to identify our children as yep. this uh, birth certificate as well, and that's going to give them jurisdiction and all of that, uh, well, nonsense, right? Yes. So yes. the I, I wanted to just touch on the birth certificate mean, mainly being there's a main there's a huge difference between what's called the birth certificate and the document of live birth. Yep. Sometimes this is called the certificate of live birth. It's called different things in different places, mm -hmm. uh, but they're two different things. And one is the founding document. This would be the one that the mother signed as called as what's called an informant. Um, so that's the, my main key thing. I could show you mine, but it's just there's too much info there. To, to of course, really of course, of course, of course, yeah. yeah. So and we want to find this founding document, and when we get our whole, a hold of this founding document, what we want to do then is assume ownership of it. Some of us don't want to own it, because with ownership, with great... With very, yeah, yeah, yeah. responsibility. Yeah. yeah, Uncle Ben, yeah, absolutely, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's true, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's... Most people, 99.9% .9 of people, do not have their certificate of live birth, as I've, I've heard it being, been referred to as before. And most of the time, it is a very long and arduous process even to even get that. You have to basically sign, you, you got to get a bunch of paperwork together, and then you, what, you have to go to the treasury or something like that. I don't know the full details, but I do know that there's a whole process just to be able to get your actual real birth certificate, not the copy, basically, that they give you, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, and and I don't mean to be a nitpicker, but we Go have got to be very careful with this this language. It's not the birth certificate mm. we're after. Mm. We're after the live birth. Yes, the document. certificate of live birth, yes. yes yep, there you yep, go. yep. In some cases, in some states, like in North Dakota, that is what is given. Mm. Uh, you'll see it right at the top, uh, and you're right, and I would actually say, I don't know if it's the Treasury, I would think that it's the, uh, the Secretary of State of your state is where you can source this document. Sometimes you do have to try to rifle through and get it in the, from the hospital itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there is a process to get it, and sometimes you even have to educate the people in the Secretary of State, uh, because through the generations they just they were like, oh, well, nobody's done this, so we're not going to teach you it. And so we're actually ending up teaching... Like, my Secretary of State's office of my state knows me on a first-name basis. You wow. Know I mean? we, hey, Cheryl, yeah, me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need this. Yeah. What's authentication, they say? Yeah. And that's what I was just going to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. So once we get this original founding document, what we're going to want to do, if we do want to assume ownership, and what I meant by that is 
when you own it, then you become responsible for it. Meaning, if there's outstanding debts, if there's other uh, legal issues, we then become the party that uh, handles the affairs. Whereas right now, I would say over 90% of people are having the government handle their affairs for them. Mm. And so there's that we have to be prepared to, to do that. And in my opinion, and actually the real case is, it has to do with trust law. So we, the, but the first step is to, and I'll get to that. The first step is to authenticate this. Uh, first at the state level, and then at the federal level. And in some cases, that gets to be a tricky situation because they confuse it with this apostee process. And so we want to get it authenticated. Essentially, what authentication does is it tells the government, hey, I have this, not you. And they authenticate and they write off like, oh, yeah, okay, he's ownership of that, not us. And then that's our first step of becoming competent and handling our own affairs and not being identified as an infant mm. anymore and being able to... You know, be respected in the eyes of the law. Now, this does go all the way back to, I think it's 1200 BC, mm. right? So there's, I mean, this has been going on for right so right long, right right. Millennia. Mm -hmm. And um, once we get it done at the the state level, we would go to the federal level and get it authenticated there as well. And then when we get that back, now we have proof that we are the owner and uh, hold this founding document. We can even use that founding document to create other ones. Uh, which essentially get us out of certain contracts, which now, are not good for us. Does the authentication process dissolve or get rid of the legal straw man entity, or is this like a part of the process to get rid of that? Well, and I'm still learning as we go, um, but I think that what you're, I think what you're, the, the, the birth certificate is the straw man. Right. Right, and so you're asking, does it get rid of that? I think what we're actually doing is gaining control of that. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And not and not and not having the the government be because that's just a, a, a trust. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And and a trust. So now we're gonna kind of turn the corner from. Well, actually, I just want to mention. So, I'm talking about contracts. We got a driver's license. That's a contract. We've got a social security number, and that's a contract. And these are things that they rope in and make us uh, subjected to their jurisdiction. Uh, another part of it is the surname. I don't know if we talked about the surname at all. We, I think we did, did a little bit. That's like the, the assured name, right? That's like the, the, the assured name of the trust or something along those lines, right? It, yes, okay. I think, I think we're on the same lines here. Mm. Surety, surety is, is it's, it means that you are... Uh, considered liable for all of the debts mm. right and so they've actually asserted that we are the trustee in this relationship because it, it's it's called an implied trust we didn't express the trust ourselves and so they made a trust even though we are the grantor they made the trust they made themselves beneficiary they made us trustee and now we're liable for all of the nonsense that they commit yeah but uh and and we and we we go along with it because we haven't been educated uh on this and so what we're doing is we're we're going to, as grantor, be putting notice of intent and giving, expressing this trust correctly, and saying, "Hey, no, you're the you're the trustee. I'm the beneficiary, and that's how this is going to go." Hmm. And uh, and so there's there's the three pieces of the trust, right, or the parties to it. That'd be your grantor, your trustee, and your beneficiary. There are more people that you can have in there, but those are the main three. Here's the other cool thing: um, you can never be all three at the same time and be the only one right wow so you, you, you can you can be all three if there's another trustee in there as well oh, this gotcha. we're getting into the woods here a little bit but uh, you 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 can't be all three at the same time it will void the trust and so I'm getting ahead of myself quite a bit but what we our remedy lies in trust law uh, and I want to touch on how there are so many people out there talking about well if you just File this paperwork, you're going to be fine. Buy my paperwork, because that's going to be the ticket. You just do say this in court, and you're going to be fine. Well, just say this to the officer. Yeah, well, just yeah. don't say this. Yeah, and yeah, then this yeah, instead. Yeah, yeah. Do this instead. Did you know? And, and it, Those people are getting in trouble. I feel bad. You know, they're getting other people in trouble. Yeah. Yes, and I fell victim to this. I've been to jail twice for having trusted uh, certain people. I'm not going to call out sure. their names, but... but um, for example, I, I spent quite a bit of time trying to get a certain kind of passport, right? 
and now I, I was directed on how to fill out this passport application, how to do it this way. Yeah, and I was awarded the passport, and everybody in the community was like, it's going to look the same. It's going to look just like a regular old passport. Just trust that it's fine. It's in their system, right? Well, then I, I was like, cool. Okay, so I'm walking around with this, this thing, this passport that I got, and feeling extra confident that I'm a different class of uh, I'm a national uh, yeah. citizen. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Lo and behold, come to find out evidence that the very thing that I'm holding, it is a type P passport, which means pauper, which means uh, you can probably imagine, but it means you have so little amount of money that you need the government to take care of you. And so they classify us, and that's what they give everybody for this, this thing. And uh, so it turns out they gave me a, a citizen passport anyway, and there's people touting around how this is the correct process. I went into a certain Telegram group, um, I'll just say it. I was in Bobby Lawrence's telegram group who I really really appreciate he's very knowledgeable about many things law But here's my experience. They were talking about that exact passport. I keep pointing at it at my shelf over mm. there. They were saying this is what's gonna be the case and blah 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 and I was like, okay fine I have found evidence to the contrary. Can you please reconcile what you're saying with and I posted the link to my evidence mm. showing pictures of what the real passport would look like of what uh, the problems were and here was the response i did not get a response and i was blocked and so yeah that sounds that about is, right yeah that's about right with a lot of these gu gurus can't have you walking around and saying that their methods don't work when they don't work yeah that's right yeah right that that yeah that's that's very unfortunate i'm sorry but it sounds like you you mentioned that you got the other type of passport anyway just by by luck or maybe whatever uh, no, actually, I, I was duped into thinking that I had this correct thing. Gotcha. Now I found evidence of how to get and secure the alternative thing, or, or I now know a, a better method, or the the method I'm going to try now is, is dramatically different than what I have uh, put on the record. And here's another thing. Police around, at least in Canada, uh, and I would imagine here in the States as well, are mm. being trained on how to handle people like us mm. and so if that's the case and i'm sure it's not to be like well you just you just leave them alone i'm sure it's a way yeah. to help them in because they're they're they're, they're to collect right yeah. that's their job is to collect money yeah yeah so if that is the case then is that not evidence in and of itself that we are not a fraud right, right? that mm -hmm. this is a real thing right if right at least themselves right? yeah yeah 100 percent. i mean just to add to that if uh and, and i've actually heard some rumors of police uh, officers and this was kind of 2016 to 2018 era and uh it was basically police officers were quitting because they were being taught uh you know so more sovereign laws or whatever they were called uh, whatever buzzwords and labels that were put on them at the time it's the real law you know so they were getting taught the real law and they were like wait a minute i don't i can't i can't just do whatever i want and these people actually have free rights and none of this you know garbage creation created system that we have actually means anything oh okay well then i quit because this is just yeah. a dog and pony show and so it, it was funny because that was happening in a lot of the the southern states but that was years ago so i uh, to your point i would imagine that the united states uh, officers are already getting trained to some degree especially probably higher up sergeants or 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 you know commanding officers or whatever are probably being trained like hey you know when you get some a-hole who's trying to tell us how the law works because he knows better than we do that he's a sovereign citizen he should be able to do whatever he wants under god's given god's given rights you know uh we got to figure out a way to scare and trap that individual so that they can no longer be free yeah that 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 does not you know uh befuddle me i would imagine that's the case in other states but in new york in particular there's a problem where there's just so many laws on the books that you can't expect a police officer to know really any like large amount of it so instead what they do a lot of the time for police officers is they give them the big stuff and then they basically say for everything else if you're pretty confident that it feels illegal or seems illegal just kind of detain them and come up with something and then we'll probably be able to find something in the giant book of new york laws yeah. that sticks to it yeah and i would imagine that that's got to be the case in other states as well yeah for sure for sure yeah and so so right now we're we're, we're seeing a, an issue you know obviously with the way in which that our own legal system and the people who are supposed to be paid to 
uh, assume control to some extent of that legal system to ensure that it's being fulfilled properly. These people don't have a clue about what the law was, and it probably it probably was pretty much that way forever. So you know that it brings up a great problem uh, that we're going to be facing probably in the not too distant future of people learning more about the actual laws that they have, and then obviously the the it's all about sales. If you can, if, who's who's going to outsell who is the is the law enforcement agent of the government going to be convinced that the that they're basically you know kind of monkeying around with the law or is the citizen going to get scared enough to basically back down and allow the officer to obstruct their their actual god-given rights so yeah we're going to be seeing a lot of these issues probably in the, in the near future you bring up a great point though a lot of a lot of great points yeah for sure something interesting here is from what i can see is uh nobody's out in te- very few People are out intentionally causing loss, injury, and harm to each other. Yeah. And so how do you make a profit off of that if everybody's actually more or less pretty well behaved? Well, you have to take their God-given rights, convert them into a, an, inf- an, inf- uh, an infraction or a, 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 you know, a crime, yeah. and then now you can pr- profit off of that. Hey, he was fishing without a license. Yeah. Well, is it not my God-given right to provide food for myself and my family? Mm-hmm. Oh, but now that's a crime, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he crossed the roadway where there isn't a crosswalk. Did anybody get hurt whatsoever? No. And so like, they've taken these things that are absolutely free rights or just traveling freely on the roadway, yeah. not harming anybody. Right. Right. And and uh, they, they make them into crimes. And that is how they generate profit for the state. And then they get you in front of a judge and then these bonds are created and the bonds uh, upon conviction the bonds go to <laughs> essentially fund the country mm-hmm. and so we have this very strange way of, of producing funding uh, and it all does come down to trust law and the trusts that are created and if we get to be knowledgeable about the trusts we can assign the judges or the prosecutors and here's what's going to happen in some case it's going to be and it's already happened a few times but somebody is going to take control of the court case that was brought to them for actually infringing on their own god-given rights because here's the the ironic thing is their policy enforcement for private companies corporations doing business as the state of new york or what have you uh and so their policy enforcement they're mall cops yeah right? yeah mm-hmm. and you know and uh we the people our law enforcement right we're the real officers it's it, supposed yeah. To be, yeah. It's supposed to be yeah yes yeah. and so we use our knowledge to enforce the law against what are actually considered uh foreign agents they're registered as foreign agents they're committing treasonous acts upon the american people and uh that 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 is a problem now sheriffs in my opinion are different they they can be evaluated as to how they stand with the constitution i've sat down with my sheriff for example he seems like a heck of a stand-up guy, that kind of a thing. But, you know, when they say protect and serve, no. you think that that means to protect us and serve us? It mm-hmm. actually means to protect the courts and serve subpoenas. Ooh. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, what's the um, what's the Supreme Court case where they officially ruled that police officers don't have any legal obligation to assist or protect you if you're in danger or, or something like that? I know, I can't remember the exact case. Yeah, I remember but you shared that with the me Supreme Court a while ago. The Supreme Court flat out said... Police officers, if you were to be being assaulted or something like that in front of them, they technically have no legal obligation to assist you, which is like, I can't think of anything else to point out that they are not there to protect and serve you. Yeah. Um, And also to your point, I think (laughs) if I was being optimistic and hopeful, I think what might happen at some point is I think the mechanism that might do this and start to shift people's attention to what their true legal power is, is um, would be like a really important case where jury nullification was like a central point of it. Because like nobody knows about that, and I think jury nullification is <clears throat> one of the most powerful tools that we actually have in order to fight back in this legal system. Because so much of it is stacked against us in so many different ways. Yeah. You know, tell, actually, tell us, tell me about jury nullification. What do those two words get together? What does that mean? So, if I'm remembering correctly, and forgive me if I get some of the details wrong, but I think it generally works along the lines of somebody can, by the evidence, be pointed to have committed. Uh, a crime in that they violated a technical law or statute or something like that. But if the if the circumstances point to the person didn't actually do anything morally wrong or something like that, or if the law overreached or was particularly ridiculous or something like that, the jury can say basically, yes, they committed a crime, but 
were not going to they technically committed a crime and that they violated the law but we don't think that it warrants a punishment so you can kind of opt out of the punishment part and that I don't know if that immediately gets rid of the law I know that it nullifies a lot of its power and its standing but so I think that that's generally how it works but I don't even know of many major modern cases where that's been a central point but if there was a mechanism that I think in the legal system would help people, I think that would be it. And I think a big point of that is the fact that we are not taught mm. anything about jury nullification in school whatsoever. Or anything about the law, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We're, we're taught to be uh, docile uh, slaves, unfortunately, instead yes. of powerful. Uh, and that's because the, the uh, Department of Education is directly funded by you know Rockefeller interests yep. who mm-hmm. yep. were Rothschilds yep. at one point and who were Orsini at yep. one the, point. Ta- the Tavistock Institute it's another one that's another one of the big high level uh, corporations that the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds this is going back like a hundred years ago that they founded that ultimately got their hands pretty much in everything medical politics and and legal as well so so this one institute going back over 100 years ago they've been from a top-down level they've been just screwing everything up for a lot of people and you know to your point too like you said you mentioned licenses there's memes online of like england and britain yeah. the, you know oh, oh you got your license for breathing you got your license for for fish and <laughs> drinking water you're yeah. drinking water without a license like the, it, it, that's yeah that's ridiculous Every day, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They're already trying to implement things like you can only, you can only travel a certain amount of miles with your car every like month. They're they're trying to start yeah. implementing stuff like that. Right, and and then and then not only that, but in the in the financial economic system as well. Look at everything in the way that things are structuring. Uh, take for example the fact that now cars, when you buy a car, the BMW a couple months back, and they got a bit a bunch of flack for this, but it's not going to stop them. They said, oh well, we're going to charge you to heat your seat. Oh, we're going to charge you to be able to do things with your car that you should already be able to do out of the box. But we're going to make it a service. Everything's going to become a service. So everybody who who has has even dabbled a little bit into looking into the realities of how the world works probably knows all about world economic forum and some things detailing like uh you know the great reset or whatever uh where they're basically saying you'll own nothing and you'll be happy well you know I just saw last week, um, you know, and I, I used to play a lot of video games. I don't play as much anymore, but I used to play a lot when I was when I was younger. I used to have Steam, you know, Steam on my computer, and I would play games on Steam. Well, one of the one of the high level execs uh, from Steam, like last week, said, "Oh yeah, if you you if you buy games on Steam, you don't own them. You're renting them. So now we're in this this whole system of everything's going to be rented. You don't actually own anything. Anything you think you own, you don't. Because even if you think you own your house, you don't own your house you pay property tax on your house you're paying for the state to not take it what happens if i don't pay that property tax i'm screwed Uh, the government can seize my my shit what happens if i don't pay any of the taxes on my vehicle oh i'm screwed they can seize my stuff so you know there's other memes too where it's like oh when anytime you buy something from the government you sell something from the government you get taxed and here's the government like come on give it to me you want to buy something you want to sell something you want to rent something anything anything involving any transaction i'm there to tax it yeah, you died. You were born. Tax. You know everything. Everything is 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 commoditized, and that's that's where they want to go, right? They want to make it so you got you need your license for everything. You you can't buy anything. It's and it's everything. all and it's all just a again. It's a it's a sleight of hand. It's a trick. None of this is legal by any right. None of this is legal. If I exchange my my hard earned well, heart, yeah, you know they're trying to make it legal. They're trying to mask everything. But yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, go ahead. I yeah. would say that it's legal, but I would say I would say that it's legal, but unlawful. Yes. And in my opinion, if it's legal, it's evil. Yeah. Because in my opinion, the legal system is the undoing of God's law. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That's you're exactly right. It's legal because the the legality of it was created by man, and it's continued to be created by man. But it's not lawful because the law mm-hmm. is created by the Lord above. And that's the that's the big difference. So you can yes. have your man made concepts and your man made BS laws. You can keep those because we don't want them. We don't we don't need them either. Yeah. 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 And I've actually we don't. We don't. And, yeah. And, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say that something. I mean, I don't mean to be doom and gloom because there is remedy, but we do want to highlight how they're 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 trying to instill fear in us about something that's already here. And here is what it is. 
You're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy. We already don't own anything. It's true. We're already trying to create remedy for our ownership of our biological property, uh, let alone all of the other property, right? There, We already own nothing. We are listed as tenants on the mortgage. We don't own a darn thing. And, uh, and so they do, right? And then you mentioned about paying taxes. Well, we're actually not the taxpayer. The account is. So the Social Security account is. Here's what you do. You file papers like these and you get the account to pay the taxes of any situation. They send you, oh, you're delinquent, $65,000 in taxes. Guess what? You're going to, you file these paperwork and it actually gets discharged. And here's the other thing. Every time we pay any kind of bill, here's $1,000 for your, I don't know, electric bill for the next three months or whatever, right? And then you pay that with Federal Reserve notes. You've just increased the national debt two thousand dollars whereas if you do it the correct way you can discharge a debt for yourself and for the nation so there's a mutual interest in people doing this correctly but we're not being taught correctly because it's of the interest of the banks to increase that national debt so much that they can just come in and assume control over like what they did in the 30s they took the gold yeah. what they did in 2008 they yeah. took all the houses they're trying to take all the actual value right. and give us paper toilet paper in return right, right. And right. It is funny how many people don't know about that, about the true, the actual death of the gold standard. Where I, I've heard at least one argument that the way that FDR got away with that was that he he used the um, Trading with the Enemy Act or something like that, and he technically declared the citizenry uh, an enemy of the government in some weird, tricky way, and then that that's how he was able to tell everybody you have to turn in your gold, which is like yeah. to me that's one of the most overt uh, uh, yeah. paragraphs ever. Um, but trying to talk about it with people is FDR is like he's almost at like Lincoln level of God. Yeah, yeah, I hate FDR. Just so, I, I, and I even put that in our book that he was probably one of the worst presidents that ever existed. And people don't know that they just say, oh, oh, wheelchair, oh, wheelchair. Feel bad for him. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I feel bad if you're in a wheelchair, but I don't feel bad that FDR was in a wheelchair. That's all I'm gonna say. You know. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention too, I don't care. I don't care. The other thing I wanted to mention too was, you know, I actually have worked, I told you my, in the last podcast that we did that I worked for a small company contracted out to the, the government on small projects. One of the small projects I worked on was actually with the police force of the state I was living in at the time. And when I was working with this, with this police force, you know, I didn't make any really lifelong connections or anything like that. Everybody there was much older. I was like in my early twenties. So I kind of just stayed out of the way. I was just a note taker. That's all I was doing there. I was a glorified note taker. But it was the way that uh, the, the thing that resonated with me, that stuck with me, was the way that the officers would talk about people. Um, and the way that they would basically say, yeah, you know, we have to police these people because otherwise they're going to be basically doing nothing with their time. These people, these people are nothing but, you know, they cause trouble. They, and it's, it was a, uh, it, it was a really interesting psychological uh, kind of thing that was going on where I could see that the police were almost putting the responsibility of everybody's lives on their shoulder. And some of them were good. Some of them were kind hearted. Some of them, you know, you could tell that their heart was in the right place because obviously none of these people knew the law. I didn't know the law. None of these people knew actually what they were doing. Some of them were good hearted and some of them were just like you could tell that they didn't have control of their own lives. So they had to enact control on other people's lives to feel good about themselves right and it was it was so it was so odd how i was able to pick that up so quickly just by the way people were talking but there was a there was a specific vocabulary that was used where basically the the modern the 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 basic trope was essentially the modern people don't understand how to live they they sit around they eat junk food they watch tv all day long and those are the good ones but it's anybody who's going outside of the scope of the little box that we've put in by even the slightest degree is a criminal and we we are responsible for ensuring that those people get taken off the streets completely and thrown in jail and it's this it's like basically the point i'm getting at is freedom was plastered all over the walls of this place but there's no freedom in the way they converse there's no there's no freedom backed behind their uh, motivations and their agenda of wanting to actually help people and as rich said they don't have to probably legally help anybody but the 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 whole point for me was I remember having a big shift because you know I don't have anything specifically against police um, I'm not somebody who's coming out like oh I completely fully support cops but at the same time 
I, each person is an individual, and as I've gotten older, I just realize people are just like really, really, really ignorant. Most cops don't know, don't have the conversations that we're having right now between the three of us. Because if they did, they wouldn't be cops. They'd realize that their job is a joke, and they're just making fifty thousand dollars a year when they could be doing something better and making more money. But a lot of the time, I mean, where do you even begin? Where do you begin to sit? A, I have fr friends who are cops. Where do I don't even know where to begin to sit down and explain to them, hey, man, half of the shit that you've done in your career as a cop was probably uh, totally unlawful and made no sense to do, and you were completely misguided in the things that, that you did other than you know your paperwork and your day-to-day -day operations, whatever. But – you know, you, you wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. So the point I'm getting at is it's, it's as much as it is, uh, uh, definitely an ignorance issue, um, for just instructing and teaching people the, the truth about the law, but it's also a psychological one too. Cause what I, what I witnessed was that there were people who probably really shouldn't have been cops who were cops. And some of them were high ranking officers. Um, you know, and again, I don't got anything towards anybody, but I think that there's, a certain level where I was witnessing the higher up you went, the angrier and le less intelligent they sounded. Mm -hmm. So, and that was just my experience. But that it's it's unfair to put these people in charge of our lives. It's just unfair. It's and and the people in power know it's unfair, which is why those people are there as cops yeah. in the first place. Yeah. So I just want I want to go on a little rant there, but um, oh, that's very a lot of problems. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that that's incredibly informative. With you know, I didn't know. It's nice to see someone on the inside say say it outright. You know, I, in, in my college experience, I took a general psychology course. We had to watch this video of a, a experiment, maybe you guys are familiar, where some of the class, this was done in I think the 60s or 70s, some of this particular class uh, signed up and some were uh, assigned the role of prisoner and some were assigned the role of guard. Oh, Stanford. They yeah, this, yeah they, this is Stanford. Uh, yeah, if, if, was this at Stanford? It was, oh, thank uh, you. I think it was called the Stanford Prison Experiment. I think it took place thank at you. Stanford, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and I'll just glaze through this, and please help me fill it in as we have time or what have you, mm. but the idea was uh, it actually – people ended up – I mean, they were still students, right? They weren't actually any of these roles, no. but they began to actually believe it. And they actually began to behave in a certain way, oppressive and completely destitute to the point where it caused lifelong mental illness for some of these people. I believe someone took their own life from it. It was just a horrible experiment. I mean, the experiment was very uh, informative, but the idea is I think that experiment has now exploded to the point that that's the reality we're yeah. living. We have this psychological situation where they feel completely normal being these oppressors uh with this oh well they need to be told how to live and then when you're in there you actually do start to identify as a criminal i've spent what a maximum of only like four days in jail but while you're in there you're like wow what did i do so wrong in life that i'm doing this and you didn't do anything wrong no you just are there because you exercise your own rights and they're making you feel like exercising your rights is a wrong thing to do and now you feel and operate and you get institutionalized is yep. what it's called mm -hmm. yep. and so you come out and you're this docile effeminate well whatever you're not it's a true. masculine man anymore it's true it it's true emasculate you it's true that's and, what they uh, want to do yeah because then you you have no power to fight and and andrew how can people learn more about the the law learn more about the ways in which they really should understand and operate within society is there, are there any courses or anything that you that you know of uh that people could do yeah you know there's a lot of different ones um i'm, I'm gonna be opening up my own coaching service it'll be three months great uh, that's something that you can reach out directly to me with maybe you can put my info in the description yeah everybody like go that. check out andrew people. down below yeah 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 and um, so I can – and here's my method. I'll show you what I know, and I'll direct you to my influences as well. And I've already vetted these influences, and so you can kind of you can kind of come to me. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, awesome. That you know That's a paid situation, but if you just want to know who I learn from, I can show you that that way too. There's too many to list right now off yeah. of the top yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, um, but there's – there's a there's a great many. It, the a huge remedy is going to be with us understanding and comprehending trust law. Where I'm currently learning from is a it's a uh, video course on YouTube. It's called uh, uh, Fearless Floyd, and he's hosting Anne Lafleur. She is it's a 24 part series. It's a little lengthy, 
but um, very informative. Awesome. If we can, can take control of our trusts and learn how to establish trusts, this is an international jurisdiction, respected. And so you actually walk into courts or establish it with your creditors. However, uh, as a, an internationally protected, uh, confidentially, in, in, your, your information is confidential. And so you're able to assert yourself better with, with what is called trust and trust law. Mm. I hope that answers some of your questions. Yeah, there. absolutely. I know vague, but yeah, I'm, no. I'm happy to help in any way. Yeah, please, please go check Andrew out again. It's Grow Through Deceit, right? And um, Grow Through Deceit. That's your plug. Yep. Yep. So Grow Through Deceit. Yeah. He's yeah. on. He's on TikTok. Um, and uh, he's he's going to be opening up courses for everybody real soon to be able to take advantage of of well, you know, be be able to take advantage of your own life because you, you other people are taking advantage of you already. So <laughs> yeah, you might as well get in the get in the ring too yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, so I mean, I've been talking with Andrew on and off, and it's just been great. I've been learning a lot through through a lot of these podcasts and interactions with you, and a lot of your videos that you got on TikTok are just phenomenal. You go, you walk through a ton of the processes. You show real examples. So yeah, definitely go check out Andrew. He's got a lot of really great content. Um, and uh, and again, thank you so much for just being here and and in, and and just helping other people kind of guide throughout their own lives and just instructing everybody on the ways in which you know they can actually like take more power back for their lives because that's what we're all about yeah. yeah i i agree i would say this last thing to to, to really jump start your education it's gonna it, you might have to do it a couple times i sure did because it's written at a different time period but read the declaration of independence of this country and then read through the constitution it shouldn't take you longer than an hour to do both of those things and if you do that you get the idea of where they were coming from uh, of this of uh, this idea of what we can do and that's in the back of whatever history book or it's in there it's available yeah. for us anywhere read through the declaration of independence and the constitution and that's a great jump start i love it love it well said brother well said and and i'm sure we'll have you on again uh we can talk uh, more legal and spiritual type topics and whatnot but uh but yeah once again thank you so much andrew well we'll let you, you go here of course and uh we'll talk to you guys very soon thanks everybody thank you. take care